Interchain transactions can have a complicated cost structure, but the Axler network makes it easy to use a single payment on the source chain. From the decentralized consensus cost on the Axler network to the execution cost on the destination chain, Axler's gas service makes this process easy. Hi, my name is Stephen Fluin, and in this video, I want to walk you through using the 0 0.15 version of the Axler JS SDK to estimate gas prices. Now, before we get started, let's talk a little bit about the structure typically used by applications. If you're building an innovative new blockchain app, you're likely building a great front end for it, possibly with many API endpoints querying data from the blockchain and other sources. The most standard way of using Axelar's gas service is to create a new endpoint that queries for gas estimate based on the transaction a user is attempting to make, and then use that gas estimate to actually create the on-chain transaction with the correct amount of native gas. I'm going to walk you through one possible use of the SDK to get a gas estimate for a given transaction based on current prices. To kick us off here, I've created a brand new project and folder. I've initialized npm and then I've created a index.ts file in order for us to start writing some code. So again, to repeat the context of this is imagine that we are building a brand new endpoint that our DAP is going to be querying in order to get a gas estimate so it knows how to create a transaction uh, on the blockchain. So within this file, I'm using TypeScript just in order to do a little bit of bundling magic here. So when we do imports, I don't have to go and manually do that. So what we're going to do is we're going to pull in a few different files from our uh, Axlr network, Axlr JS SDK. So we'll just pull this from Axlr network slash Axlr JS SDK. And we're going to pull in three things. And we're going to pull in the Axlr query API. We're going to pull in the environment and we're going to pull in a constant called chains. Now, in order to actually access this, we're going to need to install this. And let's go ahead and run npm install for this package. And then what we're going to do is we're going to use this query API in order to fetch estimates. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to create a new constant called API and we will instantiate a new Axel or query API. And we're going to give it the object with the key environment and the value environment.testnet. So from there, now we have our API we can query. So let's go ahead and actually create a sample payload that we might want to be sending. And so in order to do this, I'm going to use a library called ethers. So let's go ahead and import that as well here behind the scenes, npm i ethers. We should get the latest version, which I believe is 6. And then we can import this in our file as well. So we'll import ethers from ethers. All right, now that we've imported ethers, let's go ahead and encode a theoretical payload. So we'll say const payload equals ethers.api coder dot default API coder. And then we'll encode a couple things. We'll just encode as a string the value hello world. If I haven't missed any brackets here, we now have a payload that is API encoded as a string, so we can use that in our queries. So now uh, we have everything we need to actually query our API. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a uh, result or response, and I'm going to say api.estimate gas fee. Now, this is going to take a whole bunch of different parameters that should be coming from the front end of your application based on the specific context. So the first thing is going to be the source chain ID. So this is going to be chains.testnet. Dot, let's imagine avalanche in this case. Uh, it could really be anything. Uh, that's going to be our source chain ID. Then we're going to do a similar thing. Let's just maybe do chains.testnet. Uh, and then instead of Ethereum, let's do base Sepolia. Um, again, this doesn't really matter what you use. Uh, and that is going to be the destination chain ID. And then we have the parameter uh, for gas limit. So let's go ahead and say 700,000. So this is going to be gas limit. Then we're going to need we are going to need a multiplier. So this is what kind of safety you want uh, on that gas because gas prices can change, and so you always want to overestimate a little bit the gas that you're going to be sending. So this is going to be our gas multiplier, uh, and then we're going to be giving it the source chain token symbol. But we don't actually need to specify this. This is optional source chain token symbol. So what we'll do is we'll just give it an undefined here. We're going to do the exact same thing for the next parameter, which is also going to be undefined. And this is going to be the min gas price. If you want to make sure that you always pay at least some gas, you can supply a min gas price. And then the last thing is going to be the actual payload. So we've already API encoded it. So we can say, give us that payload. 
there is a small type mismatch here between what ethers is going to give us, which is a encoded string, which is going to start with 0x and then this the payload. But the typings here are not working. So let's go ahead and just cast this to an any to get past that error. All right, so what we're getting back here is a response. This is a promise that is going to give us the actual gas estimate. So what I can do is actually just go response dot then and then give it a result. And then what I'm going to do with this result is I'll just console dot log out result was and then I'll take the response. Uh, we also probably want to do a dot catch. And this is going to give us some sort of error. And what we'll do is we'll console dot error out what the error was. All right, with that, we have our most simple gas estimate. Uh, again, we're querying uh, what the gas cost is going to be to send a message from Avalanche to base Sepolia. Uh, we are building this gas limit based on the estimated complexity on the destination chain. We're giving it a gas multiplier for safety. Uh, we're not needing to supply the min gas or the source chain token symbol. And then we're giving it our payload. So what I should actually be able to do now is go ahead and run NPX. Let's clear this out. I should be able to run NPX TS node to just execute our TypeScript file and pass it that index.ts file. What we're going to see again is it's going to create an XR query API for the test environment, which knows how to connect to that backend. We're going to be calling the estimate gas fee and then printing out the result. So here we go. The result was eight point dot, and that is in the source chain gas fee. So in this case, this was in AVAX in the smallest uh, units of AVAX. And so with that, we have now built a very simple script here that is able to query the gas price for any given transaction. And it should be very simple to extend this into an API endpoint that your dApp can use. That is going to be it for this video. Thanks so much for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.